The USSR authorities did not publish an analysis of the weather events of 1972 for a long time. Only decades later, after a thorough check of the archives, historians were able to reconstruct the whole picture of that time, which many with good reason were called the darkest years in the history of the Soviet Union's climate. During a single year the temperature jumped from minus 50 to plus 40 degrees. In that memorable year the European part of the USSR was in the grip of the African heat. Then the heat moved north, where they were least prepared for such temperatures. It was a disaster unparalleled in history. In the summer of 1972 there was an abnormal heat wave in the Soviet Union, caused by a powerful blocking anticyclone, which did not allow other air masses to enter the territory occupied by it. Usually such cyclones last three to five days and then disappear, but this one lasted for several months. The death toll from the 40-degree heat over the three summer months was estimated at hundreds of people, and the total damage reached $22 billion. Not a drop of rain fell over the most populous western regions of the USSR during three summer months. Ironically, the heat wave was preceded by an unusual winter in 1971 to 1972. Together with scanty snowfall, severe frosts of minus 40 degrees Celsius were in Moscow until mid-March. The ground could not accumulate enough moisture. During a month and a half in the Volga, central and northwestern regions of the RSFSR, and even in the Urals, Ukraine and Kazakhstan an unprecedented heat wave prevailed with negligible precipitation of only 20 mm. The most difficult situation was in the Ivanova, Gorky, Nizhny Novgorod, Kostroma, Kalinin, Tver, and Ryazan regions, where the thermometer did not fall below plus 40 C. The situation was no less dangerous in the Moscow region, where a 35-degree heat tormented residents of Nagatinsky, Orokovozuevsky, Pavloposadsky, Yegoryevsky, and Shatersky districts. From August 26 to 31, the temperature in Moscow during daytime was constantly reaching plus 38 C, while at night it dropped to only plus 24 C. The abnormal summer drought of 1972 was caused not only by the atypically high local air temperature, which dehydrated the soil, but also by unusual winter weather. Already in January and February, the inhabitants of the above-mentioned regions felt the effects of the climatic disruption. Instead of a traditionally long, snowy and frosty winter, they witnessed an unusually severe, but short-lived and practically snowless season. Abnormal frosts of minus 35 degrees to minus 40 degrees Celsius in central Russia, combined with minimal snow cover, deprived the soil of the necessary level of moisture. The cold winter was followed, right on the calendar, by an unusually warm spring in March, which turned into a sultry summer that tested people and nature, which was destroyed by forest fires and burning peat bogs. Forest fires blazing like torches became the scourge of the dry summer of 1972. In order not to sow panic, the country's authorities stated in official statements that the natural fires were the result of careless handling of fire by tourists. Since July 16, 17 regions of the Soviet Union had seen monstrous fires that destroyed everything in their path. In just 10 days they burned as many forests as in the previous 10 years. For a moment it seemed that the firefighters could contain the elements, but on August 24, a powerful hot dry wind swept through the region and, cancelling out all previous successes, began to spread the fire at a speed of 18 km per hour, in other words at 300 meters per minute. A total area of 1.8 MLN Ha of forest fires was covered and more than 360,000 people were involved in extinguishing them. In the Moscow region in addition to the forests there were burning peat fields, as well as peat bogs. As a consequence, an opaque suffocating smog covered the capital and its suburbs, which for three months made it difficult for the citizens to breathe, adversely affecting their well-being. To combat the burning peat bogs, in addition to specialists, military personnel were also involved who continuously worked 20 hours a day on the earth-moving machines. About 90,000 tons of water were poured on the peat fires daily, 
but despite everyone's efforts the burning was halted only after September 29, when by a lucky coincidence of climatic circumstances the first snow fell on the region in advance. This gift of nature saved the Moscow region not only from peat bogs, but also from an ecological disaster. The thing is that in the minds of some officials who wanted to get rid of the peat fires as soon as possible and report to the leadership about the successful completion of the operation, an absurd idea was born to fight the smoldering of fossil fuels with concrete. To carry out this plan, several thousand tons of mortar were used, which was simply poured over the peat fields. The scale of the tragedy of the 1972 drought was so great that Soviet Defense Minister Andrei Grechko, who was dealing with the elimination of fires and their consequences, temporarily moved his headquarters closer to the epicenter of the disaster in Shatura. Emergency commissions to combat fires were formed in all areas covered by the fire, which involved not only professional firefighters, but also soldiers, employees of the Ministry of Internal Affairs, workers, collective farmers, townspeople and volunteers. The drought was finally defeated only with the help of natural forces, which contributed to the disintegration of the blocking anticyclone, the establishment of cold weather and the long-awaited precipitation. During the time when the elements raged, the agricultural sector suffered enormous damage. Grape plantations, grain and vegetable fields, which provided the country with food, perished in the fire. To avoid a food crisis, the Soviet leadership had to sell 486 tons of gold, and with the proceeds to buy the missing amount of grain abroad. Another memorable year was not only in the USSR. Imagine Iran. In 1972, it snowed here in a few days more than in Moscow during the whole winter. This snowstorm went down in the country's history as the most bizarre and destructive disaster. From February 3rd to 9th a snowstorm hit the country, and the temperature dropped to minus 6 to 20 degrees. The seemingly harmless snowstorm ended up being a real disaster. Despite the fact that it was a natural disaster, there is not much information about it. This is quite strange, because Iran in those years was not a closed country. It was only after the 1979 Islamic Revolution that Iran became a theocracy that is, the power of the clerics, for whom religious rules and doctrines, by which the state and the people live, were at the center. Imagine Iran with its arid, hot climate. Only people living in mountainous areas know about the cold and precipitation here. And here is an unexpected powerful cyclone from the Caucasus and everything seemed to be fine at the beginning. When the first snow began to fall people ran out onto the streets with joy. Children many of whom had never seen snow began to play with snowflakes. But then it snowed more sharply. The residents were totally unprepared for the natural disaster. It snowed non-stop, making it difficult for rescuers to work. The drifts grew to 3 to 8 meters high. How much is this? For comparison, an average of 1.7 to 2 meters falls during the entire winter in Moscow. During the whole winter. And here several times more and for only five days. The snow covered two and a half stories high, taking into account that most houses in Iran were one story. The residents had no warm clothing, and the roofs of the houses collapsed under the weight of the snow masses. The death toll passed into the thousands. But this was not enough for the elements. The second, weaker snowstorm struck the country on February 11, and then the cyclone left in the direction of Azerbaijan. As soon as the warmth returned, the inhabitants sighed happily. But it wasn't to be, the country was hit by a powerful flood. As a result of natural disasters 200 Iranian settlements disappeared from the face of the earth and have never been restored. In fact, this is not the only blizzard in Iran's history. Such events recur every few years. The devastating consequences were avoided, however, because Iran's public utilities were prepared for a possible snowfall. Citizens, too, were warned, and everything turned out without dire consequences. If you were interested thank the author by giving me a nickname.
And also don't forget to subscribe, so you won't miss even more interesting videos on my channel. Turn on notifications by clicking bell and share this clip with your friends. What else interesting you can add on this video? Write in the comments, it will be interesting to read.